Hey guys, welcome to this video. I want to start this video off by saying this is nothing against Cole Medin at all. It's almost like I'm just continuing the conversation. Now, I really like Cole. I'm a YouTuber, he's a YouTuber. I'm just giving my opinion, and I don't want you to take the title and thumbnail of this video in some way that I'm like attacking anyone, right? I'm just giving my opinion on this. Now, Cole released a video yesterday about context engineering, and I wanted to give my own personal opinion on this, just because I think I've got a slightly different opinion to a lot of people. But also, I, I also want to say why I understand why like context engineering is so important. Now, context engineering is super, super important if you're building a really complicated structure, right? So if you're going down the complicated route, which is fine, right? There's nothing wrong with going down the complicated route. If, if you're building like an enterprise app or like a production app that, and you want security, you want everything, that's fine, right? Go down the context engineering route. But I feel like you do need some experience with programming and even with the best of the best context engineering, everything, you're still going to run into errors, right? You're still going to run into problems, loops, all of that stuff, right? My whole thing is going simple, right? And this is why I still vibe code. And I'm gonna, I, I think there's quite, a, quite an interesting new type of vibe coding that is only really possible because Claude Code and Claude Opus 4, whatever, are so good, right? And what I've been doing recently is sack the framework, right? So I just use HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and then PHP. Uh, it's called the LAMP stack, I believe, where the P can stand for either Python or PHP, apparently. And I'll tell you right now, you don't need any context engineering or anything for, for this, right? Claude Code can do this out of the box so quickly and so easily. And then something like SQL Lite, or the M here is MySQL as well, so you could also use MySQL to build the database if you need the database, right? And then you just do like a simple payment system like Stripe or whatever. And the really good thing is because you're just using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP, Python, whatever, all of these things like Stripe are super easy to implement. That it's it's not going to struggle when you try and do OAuth on Next.js, for example. Even with context engineering, you will probably struggle unless you know exactly what you're doing. Because there's a lot of factors to consider. If you keep it simple and just use something like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Python, whatever, then it's just going to be much easier for the AI to implement everything. Now, obviously, I'm not a bullshitter. I hope people know that about me by now. So. I will say security is a huge issue right here. I worry about this just as much as everyone else, okay? And obviously, if you're using some kind of context engineering with some kind of framework, the likelihood is that the security is going to be much, much better, right? That's kind of the point of frameworks, as I understand it, is to improve security. But for building an MVP, honestly, like you can spend a few weeks on a project or you can spend like a few days on a project and you can get to an MVP much, much faster vibe coding, right? Let me talk a little bit about how I view vibe coding, right? Vibe coding, what it used to be when the models weren't so good was giving a large prompt, giving some context, which I guess is similar to context engineering in some to in, in in some ways, and then just sending it all to Klein, for example, I was using Klein at the time, and just kind of like, you know, building things and then like trying to fix things, whatever, right? What I've been doing more recently with Claude Code because it's so damn intelligent and because I'm using such a simple system with no frameworks, is I just kind of let Claude Code do its thing. My prompts have gone from like one thousand words to like, you know, 100 words, or like 50 words. And I just say, do this, do that, give this a go, use this technology to do this, that and the other, or just give me technological um, 
you know, ideas, ideas for technology that you would use. What I mean by this complicated, by the way, I'm not saying that context engineering is complicated. I'm saying if you're building something complicated, you should probably use context engineering. I'm sure that is the best way to build something complicated. But I just don't really want to build anything complicated. I want to build kind of MVPs of SASs, whatever, because if you can't get to 10 users, you can't get to a thousand, right? So you need to know if you can get to 10 users as quickly as possible. And this is a tried and tested uh, methodology for SaaS projects, for companies, whatever, right? Your first one is probably not going to work. Your second one is probably not going to work. Your third one might work. You learn from the mistakes of the third one, and then maybe the fourth one actually does work, right? So I think while context engineering is hugely important if you're building like a super super production ready app i just think that like for a lot of people for like 99 percent of people the actual way to go is to just vibe code something using a very very simple and easy to use stack now just as an aside from this the other thing that i'm doing to make things simple this is on the school community first link in the description if you're interested in joining please feel free to join either to support me or just to get this information in a more refined way. These are the MCPs that I actually use to make things simpler too. Now, I probably wouldn't use Superbase if I was gonna build something else. I'd probably use my PHP, um, but Superbase is a very, very good production ready uh, database. You can use something like SQLite. I didn't realize that this is what my project was doing for fucking ages, <laughs> just so you know. So I, I, I did the time for you guys. You can use SQLite as an ORM. I actually don't know what ORM stands for. Oh, right, okay, object relational mapping. That makes perfect sense. So uh, object relational mapping, which is basically like you use your code on SQL on your like project to push code to Superbase, right? So you're still coding inside your project instead of like constantly going to Superbase and changing stuff, right? Uh, the other ones I use, DigitalOcean MCP, it's like you can get some, you can get an MVP running in three minutes with this MCP, okay? You can, I've, I've made a video about that before. You can literally launch a project, like a little calculator, whatever, DigitalOcean MCP, bang, 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 $3 a month, bang, you have something that you can send to a client, you can send to people, you can get some feedback, you can do this, that, the other, you can see what it looks like live, you can see if it works live, it's great, honestly. Shopify Dev MCP, I use this for um, Shopify documentation. I love documentation MCPs. I know everyone goes on about Context 7. I have not had good experiences with Context uh, 7, basically. I just have to say that. Puppeteer is for allowing it to see the live code and then fixing it, although I'm coming up with a new method right now that uses Claude Desktop and browser use for this, so I'll have a video on that very soon. Um, Uptash for cache management, Context 7. I do use Context 7 at the end of the day. I just, you know, I've had problems with it. And then Bright Data uh, MCP, which is a really, really good way to scrape SERPs and scrape websites without running into proxy issues. Gina doesn't have an MCP, so I do use Bright Data for that kind of scraping. People aren't familiar with like the slight difference between what Claude Code can natively scrape and what Bright Data can actually scrape or what Gina can scrape. There is a difference, just so you know, okay? People don't think there is, but there is a difference between the two. Also, you will burn through your context extremely quickly if you are scraping the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript of every page, which is what Claude Code does. Bright Data, by the way, sponsor of the channel. Thank you so much, Bright Data. You've really allowed me to do what I want on this channel, so thank you so much. But definitely check them out, guys. There'll be a link in the description also for Bright Data. But yeah, I just wanted to talk about this because I saw Cole's video and about seven people have sent me it and seven people have, um, they, they came into my chat yesterday because my video was called Vibe Coding, whatever, and telling me Vibe Coding is done. I, I, I just disagree. Like, I understand context engineering. It just has a slightly different use case to what I'm working on. But for example, we are probably building um, something for a company soon. Uh, and I probably would use either context engineering or something very similar to context engineering um, for that project because it's an enterprise app, right? If you're building an enterprise app, vibe coding is done, 
right? If you're just building an MVP, which I think 99% of people are doing because they don't know how many users they're even going to get, then I think vibe coding is, is the way to go. I'm going to leave the video there, guys. Shout out to Cole. I really, really like his channel. I've always liked his channel. It's a really big inspiration as well for my channel. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you're watching all the way to the end of the video, you are an absolute legend. Check out the school. Check out Bright Data. I'll see you very, very soon with some more content. And peace out.